And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone, I will make him and help me for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, 21 to 24, King James Version. Now, choosing a bride, in many things of life we are given a choice. The way of life itself is a choice. We have a right to make our own way, choose our own way that we want to live. Education is a choice. We can choose whether we are going to be educated or whether we are not going to be educated. That's a choice that we have. Right and wrong is a choice. Every man, every woman, boy and girl, has to choose whether they are going to try to live right or not live right. It's a choice. Choice is a great thing. Your eternal destination is a choice. And maybe tonight some of you will make that that choice of where you will spend eternity before this service ends tonight. There will be one time, and if you turn God down many times, there will be one time you'll turn him down the last time. There is a line between uh, mercy and judgment. And it's a dangerous thing for a man or a woman, boy or girl, to step across that line. Or there's no return when you step across that dead line. So tonight, it might be the time that many will make their, their decision where they will spend that endless eternity. There's another choice that we have in life. That's a life's companion. A young man or a young woman stepping out on life has, a, has been given a right to make a choice. The young man chooses, the young woman has a right to accept or reject it. But it's still a choice on both sides, both man and woman. They have a right to choice. Now, it's a serious thing when we go to choose a wife. A man, for the vows here, is until death do we part. That's how we should keep it. And you take that vow before God that only death will separate you. And I think we should, a man in his right mind that's planning a future, that he should choose that wife very careful. Be careful what you're doing. And the woman choosing a husband or accepting the choice of a husband should be real careful what she's doing. And especially in these days, a man should think and pray before he chooses a wife. I think today what's got so many divorce cases now that we lead the world in America in divorce cases. We lead the rest of the world. There's more divorces here than anywhere else. This nation. And supposed to be and thought of a Christian nation. What a reproach. Our divorce courts. I think the reason of it is because that man has got away from God. And women's got away from God. And we find that if a man prayed and a woman prayed over the matter, not just look at a pretty set of eyes or big strong shoulders, or such as that, or some other worldly affection, but would look first to God and say, God, is this your plan? I think today there's so much cheating. Just like in school, when, when the kids come by of a morning, many of the kids in the neighborhood, at, at friends of mine, 
Well, come by and say, Brother Branham, will you pray for us? We're having a, a test today. I, I worked all night and I don't seem that I could, could get it settled. Pray for me. I think that any school kid, if you would, if you, and the parents at the table of the morning, if you'd say, Mother, John's got a test today, let's pray for him now. I think it would be the, all that you could ever do in any other way or looking over on somebody else's paper and cheating. I think if you just come out and pray over the matter, if we would study what we're doing when we're going to get married, when we choose our wife, our husband, if we'd study it over, a man should pray earnestly for he could ruin his entire life. Remember the vow is until death do we part. And he could ruin his life by making the wrong choice. But if he knows what he's making the wrong choice, and to marry a woman it isn't fit to be his wife, and he does it anyhow, then it's his fault. If the woman takes the husband and knows that he's not fit to be a husband to you, then that's your own fault after you know what's right and wrong. So you shouldn't do it until you thoroughly pray through. Again, the kind of woman that a man would choose will reflect his ambitions and his character. If a man chooses the wrong woman, it reflects his character. And what he ties himself to shows truly what's in him. A woman reflects what's in the man when he chooses her for wife. It shows what's down in him. No matter what he says outside, watch what he married. I go to a man's office and he says he's a Christian. Pinups all around on the walls. That old bloogly woogly music going on. I don't care what he says, I don't believe his testimony. Because his spirit's feeding on them things of the world. What say if he would marry a coarse girl? Or what if he'd marry a sex queen? Or just a pretty modern Ricketta? It reflects, it shows what he has in his mind of what his future home's going to be. Because he's took her to raise his children by and whatever she is that's the way she'll raise those children so it reflects what's in the man a man that takes a woman like that shows just what he's thinking of the future could you imagine a Christian doing a thing like that no sir I could not a true Christian will not look for such beauty queens and coarse girls and sex queens. He'll look for Christian character. Now you can't have all things. There might be one girl that's real pretty. And the other girl, maybe she's a, her statue looks better than this one. And you might have to sacrifice one for the other. But if she's not the statute of a lady or of a woman and she's I don't care whether she's pretty or not you better look at her character whether she's pretty or not pretty now for it is becoming if a Christian would choose a wife he ought to choose a genuine born again woman regardless of what she looks like it's what she is, what makes her. And then again, that reflects his own godly character and reflects what's in his mind and what's going to be in the future for his family. Will be raised by such a woman. For the future plans for his home. If a man marries a sex queen, you see what he's looking for for the future. If a man marries a woman that's won't stay home, you see what he's looking for in the future. But um, you know, you have to plan and look, 
pray when you're choosing. For we see by this the word of promise, she, the bride that a man would choose, is going to reflect his character. It reflects what's in him. Now, could you imagine a man filled with the Holy Ghost take something like that to be a wife? I, I, I just don't see it, brother. Uh, maybe I'm just a, an old crank, but, you know, I, I just can't understand that. See? Notice, for it's going to reflect what's in him. She's going to help him make his future home. Notice, God's first Adam didn't have any choice for his wife. He didn't get a choice. God just made him one. And he didn't get to choose her. So we find out that she led him astray from God's word. He didn't get to pray over the matter. He, he, he is like you and I. He didn't get a choice. And again, by doing that, she led him from his rightly position as being a son of God. And she did it by showing him a more modern way of living. Something that they really shouldn't have done, but uh, the character of her showed that she was wrong. Her motives and objectives were simply wrong. And persuaded him by her reasoning that the modern new life that she had found, which was contrary to God's word, was a better way to live. When a man chooses a certain girl out of a family, he must not rely upon beauty, for beauty is deceiving, and beauty, modern, worldly beauty, is of the devil. Yeah. Oh, I hear someone say out there, be careful here, preacher. I say that these things on this earth that's called beautiful is absolutely of the devil. I'll prove it to you. Then in the light of this remark, let's search God's holy word to see if it's right or not. And some of you women wants to be so pretty. See where it comes from. In the beginning, we find that Satan was so beautiful to he deceived angels. And he was the most beautiful angel of all of them. Show it lays in the devil. Proverbs says, Solomon said, beauty is vain. That's right. Sin is beautiful. Certainly it is. It's attractive. 